Hey, good morning everybody. Welcome to Stonehearth Dev Stream number 242, uh, where we're gonna work a little bit on the Cyclops for the desert biome just a little bit. And uh, this is this is Ali. I do concept art and illustration on the team. And thanks for joining us. Uh, good morning, Game Muse. Or uh, and Ildred and Aprox Pro, thanks so much for joining the stream today. Ooh, alrighty. Okay, I think I left this guy somewhere in here. Hmm. Oh my gosh. <laughs> sorry, uh, sorry, game. I, I understand that it's it's afternoon and evening elsewhere in the in the wide wide world. Good morning, Teapot M. Oh, just game. Okay, I will call you game then. I think we've had this conversation before, but forgive me, my uh, my my memory is a thing. Uh, and Orithian, thanks for joining, and Sarandaris. Uh, right, right, I'm supposed to be looking for, no, not that, I'm supposed to be looking for our Cyclops. I am in the right folder. Critters. Oh, yes! There it is. <laughs> this day. <laughs> oh my. Uh, let's see. There we go. There's our dudes. Oh, I left a friend in here. You guys get to you get, guys get to meet somebody. Surrendery says today needs some tasty, tasty art. Well, we're not working on food today, but that would be a super fun stream. Uh, all right. I will remember game. I will just call you game from now on. And let's see. Taya Kraman, hello, welcome, and Bluezack, good evening. Alrighty, so what you're looking at here is actually uh, the old, uh, an old file that has all of our ogres laid out in it, and pieces of them. You can see, like this is where this this one here would be like uh, the model, like getting ready to be exported for animations and things like that. Um, but yeah, so you've got like, uh, wait, no, it's this one. You've got like this guy over here, which was, I think, the original model. So you can see he's all in one piece that we can easily turn him around and mess with his colors. Kind of like what we did with the goblins a little while ago. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I should show you guys how, um, because we worked on, worked on the little goblin leader last time. We did some of his concept art and attempted to model out some of his horns in like the last 10 minutes. So when we're done, uh, done introductions over here, I'll show you how that all worked out. And some, uh, some work in progress over there. Uh, so, we're making desert versions of all of our, our monsters and, and everybody else. Uh, and when I came in here, I, I had the goblins in a place where uh, we've still got a few things that we need to do to them to like adjust their contrast and uh, just some design tweaks here and there. Um, but I came over here to kind of take a break because there's a million goblins and I was feeling, feeling a little immersed. And uh, I saw the little cyclops guy over here. So this, uh, this idea of like the single-eyed guy kind of became a start. Uh, and I was inspired by this, uh, I guess this little, this, this shorter mohawk on his hair to start looking into um, more of like a ridge type thing on the back of these guys. Sort of like how we were talking about with the goblins when, um, when we were working on them, we came up with the idea of their, their green being a lighter, more reflective green so that when they're out in the sun, they, they don't overheat and maybe someday a in the Northern Alliance in the in the ice fields, uh, the goblins out there would resemble like more of a, a darker teal that would actually absorb more heat. So I was trying to think of ways that we could kind of have that kind of thinking with uh, our ogres as well, and the idea of trading out. So it's like when you see the ascendancy guys, they're like scales and hair. So I wanted to experiment with like going in and trading that out for just like really rigid plates down his back and make him look super tough and cool. Um, and then at some point, I had spent so long looking at his face that I started seeing, like, his face like an open, smiling mouth, and we created Smiling Pete. So, uh, that's that's a thing. Um, that's probably not a thing, but hey, I, who knows? He's he's just such a happy guy. So meet Smiling Pete. He's kind of the the mascot for this operation. Um, I always look forward to seeing him and his huge happy grin. These little dots are his eyes. Um, so now you can't unsee this as a smiling mouth too, I hope. Um, Aprox Pro is asking if Alpha 20 is going to be another Rise Children update. Actually, no. 
Um, so originally I was hoping that these guys would all be done and awesome for Alpha 19. It didn't work out that way because we have a lot of them and it was taking me longer than I thought. They will be, um, if not all of them, most of the ones that we've been working on will make it into Alpha 20, but Alpha 20 is not focused on updating uh, Riot's children. Of uh, Hey Flavor Flurv, yeah, thanks for making it. Um, Let's see if I missed anybody. No. Okay, cool. Yay! Alright, and let right, 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 let's see. Um Do my goblins not live in here? Oh, outstanding. I get oh that's right, they're not so right. This folder isn't actually a work in progress folder. This is where I save things out when they're like ready to go and they're all carved up. Uh so this is not where they would live. I have too many folders. I think they live in here. Oh no! The <laughs> huge happy grin. Ellie is a reincarnated Bob Ross. No, I am not. Or maybe I am. That would be kind of rad. Um, that'd be fun. <laughs> Sir Andrew he says he's king of the rumpa beat. It's a mask reference. I. Have. That's awesome. Uh, Speedy seven seven eight is what is asking. What exactly is Alpha Twenty going to be about? Uh, it's actually going to be more of a gameplay update, and I'm not sure if we're talking about that just yet, so I'm kind of worried about saying more, um, but it should be super fun. So let's leave it at that for now. Um, okay, cool. So here's our little dude we were working on. He's a little distracted. Uh, and we should also pull up the art we made of him. So we can kind of compare those two for those of us who might have missed that. So, where is he? Party Goblin? No, that's not right. Flowers, Storybird. Mm. Amazing. How do I. How? Oh my gosh. I just need one folder with everything listed in alphabetical order because when you give me multiple folders I just start putting things in them and we're here for days workshop windows RC critters hmm I think that's not where he lives hmm storybird <laughs> the goblin with the bird on his head. <laughs> Poyo goblin. Um, right. So we have talked a little bit about the the Poyo goblin, and uh, stay tuned for more on that. It might be sticky. Um, right. No, we've already confirmed that is not where I need to be. We could do some house cleaning in here. Best hat goblin. Yes. Yes. We found it. Hey, TPC turtle squish. Sorry, I was lost in my files trying to figure it out. I knew I named it something really conspicuous, but I couldn't remember, and more importantly, I couldn't remember where we put it, because there's the Arch Dreams folder here, but I think I had put it into public so I could take it right back to the desk. All right, so here is the paint over we made on the stream. And we took, uh, so we used to have like, one of the little scout guy goblins had a Zilla skull on his head, and it seemed that this was a very conspicuous uh, powerful looking hat. I don't know if we still have him over here. Okay, yeah, he's here. So this is a very, like, cool, awesome hat for just a goblin scout. So this kind of became the foundation for a... Oh, oh, right, and for anybody... Oh, no. Oh, that's right. They're not one model. For anybody who, who might be missing the reference, who might not have tuned in last week, uh, this is... This is this is the goblin with the, the poyo on their head. Um... We put the Poyo on his head because the Poyo was here in the file and it just seemed like the thing to do. And then we made up a story about how goblins in the desert uh, elect their chieftains through a ritual that involves them trying to convince a Poyo to stay on their heads. Right now this one is working hard. He's been like that for a week though, I think he's got promise. Um, so right, we were using, uh, we were using this cap. Uh, as a foundation for our goblin chieftain because this is a really cool hat um, And when you when you uh, have goblin camp settling near your towns They like you know you get the text is like a goblin with a fancy hat swaggers in so 
absolutely it has to have the fanciest hat. So we we wanted to enhance the silhouette a little bit. So the other Goblin Chieftain has like the cool flag on his back and like the big jewel on his head and it's really neat. Um, so for this one, we expressed that kind of epic verticality and epic hatness by adding this like uh, this like mounted horn mantle on top of the skull. Um, which might be a little confusing. This is a Zilla skull, and uh, Zillas are huge lava-infused uh, Gila monster dragons that roam around the desert, and they don't have horns. Uh, but remember, these guys kind of pick up everything they find in the desert and use them to, like, outwardly show how cool and fierce they are. So, like, uh, obviously this tiny, like, little bony rib cage down here uh, is not from a Zilla, unless that is the weirdest looking Zilla ever. And now I kind of want to draw it, but we're not going to do that today. Um, so yeah, as you can see, a lot of the details that we thought about uh, during the stream really actually came through super nice in the model. So thanks again everybody who tuned in and helped with, uh, with the creation of this guy. I also got a really cool um, note on the discourse about trying out something akin to like, um, something more akin to like, a couple of ribs on part of a rib cage mounted on top of the head, and I did try that. So thanks again for that comment, but it just wound up being a little too noisy. You'll notice that I also let him have the rest of his horn. It seemed a bit strange to when it was knocked down, like it got a little difficult to understand what it was. Um, and he's already he's already a little asymmetric. Ace words asymmetrical. He's got like the sunken eyes, so that when you do this, he's got like the googly eyes. It's, it's so so good. Um, but yeah, a lot of those details came through okay. I think the only place that they really suffered was uh, the belt buckle here. Um, at a distance that started to feel like it was this really bizarre extension of the rib cage. So that was kind of, that was kind of no good. Uh, and I'm extra happy with how the hands came out. Like I feel like the, like the bony pieces strapped to the bright teal gloves is just kind of a fun detail. Um, oh, I'm already zoomed out. And compared with the rest of the crew, uh, I think he stands out really nice. He's the only one with like this amount of teal on him anymore. So originally this guy kind of uh, blew that up. But when you look at him with the rest of them, clearly this goblin is kind of important. These guys are allowed to wear teal in small quantities, but this one is like decked in super fancy dyes. Uh, okay, so that should, <laughs> there's your there's your lore catch up for uh, TPC Turtle Squish was saying, thanks for catching me up on the lore. I couldn't make it last week, which is a shame. We missed you. Um, but yeah, that was, this was some of our emergent lore over here. Um, yeah, and that's, I also went back Oh, hey, he's not here. Poop. So I had paint overs for the thief and the uh, the marauder. And the marauder is still a little whip. So, um, yeah. The thief and the marauder, to me, are really iconic goblins. Like, when you see these guys, you know you messed up. They're gonna come in and just wreck your stuff. And the thief is just so freaking cute. I love the thief goblin. Um, but I've always kind of, like, fought a little bit with this really really round hat. So I wanted to challenge uh, I wanted to challenge myself to try and create a cool silhouette that didn't fight with our our voxel aesthetic. And I also wanted to do like the thing where it like has like the little the little the little hood triangle bit in the back. So when you saw him in profile it actually like had that silhouette to it and I thought that'd be really cute. Um, and I wanted to actually paint the shadows onto the goblin's face so that in some ways you could kind of see the silhouette of like his, his weird goblin teeth and his little eyes. Um, so I think he came out super cute and I'm actually pretty happy with him. The Marauder still needs a little work. We were going for like more of this like almost like Oni mask kind of thing with the horns and like the stitching on it. So it like clamshells over his face and like uh, and like hides, it, hides, who, hides who they are. Because it's like, again, the Marauders are Honestly, when you compare them to the other goblins, they're really freaky. You can't see their faces, they're just these glowing eyes and this armor, and it's just like, how do we how do we give that a a desert uh, a desert goblin twist? What can we do to make that to make that spooky? Um, so this was a direction that we were trying in, and we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be enhancing the horns, messing with the face a little bit. Uh, but one of the cool things that did come out of this is the color of the bones here pops out really, really nice with the lime peel green of the skin. 
So we might go through, you can see when you zoom out a little bit, um, that the color of the bones on these goblins at a distance kind of blend in with them. So we're probably going to go through at some point and do a version of these that have uh, more of like the lightest light of these, of, of this kind of brown for the bones instead of the tan. Um, or we'll mess with the contrast in other ways because the tan is pretty, it's just yeah, when you zoom out it falls apart. Is there anything fun over here? Nope, just weird spooky floating heads. Okay, neat! Oh, at Stone- okay, so Turtle Squish is saying, I don't know if you saw, but in the comments for Desktop Tuesday, someone suggested Cactus Entlings. Well, you're in luck. That's exactly what we did. Um, I was saying before that we were totally going to put the working files for this stuff. Uh, and we will get to modeling on the- on the ogre, I just want to get you guys caught up with everything we've been doing. But, since you mentioned Cactus Entlings... Best Hat Goblin, yes. Take a break. We do have those. Is it? Uh, oh wow. This is all the things for Desktop Tuesday. Uh, right, so if you look in here, this was our Entling. And this was the paint over for the Entling that turned him into a little cactus dude. And the model lives... I'm gonna find it the first try. Yes. Lives in here. And there's three kinds. Um, but we're gonna open the pink one. Because the pink and the gray look really cute together. Yeah, but this is for an, uh Relis is saying show the cactus antlings on last week's streams, I think, and in the DT. Uh but just in case anybody missed it, these um these guys are our cactus antlings. And they're super cute, I think. They need a cool name, so at some point we might be throwing that out to you guys to help us figure out what we want to call. Uh, but that's not going to be the focus for today. Um, at the moment I've been calling them cac Cactus Friends, but that's a mouthful and it's not very catchy. Or rather it is catchy, but it might be the wrong kind of catchy. I wanted to import the other kind so you can see how they shake out. Um, spiny. Oh! Oh no! Ah, oh, there you go. So this one's got like like two little cactus outcrops on his big cactus head or her big cactus head. It's hard to tell. They're plants. Um, and they've got, instead of like twiggy branch fingers, they've got spiny fingers. So they're like, they're very scratchy. Their faces aren't as angry as Entlings. They have kind of more of a surprised. Uh, I think they look kind of sweet. Um, and this one has the, um, this, this flower, the same one that you'll see on the goblins and stuff like that. The Mighty Shoosh says, call them cactlings. We've been, we've thrown that one down a little bit, too. Um, the eye, uh, Turtle Squish says, the eyes look like that skeleton from Pandemic's fan art. Oh my gosh. It's so cute. Uh, Orithion says, sand or clay golems would be pretty cool for the desert. That would be cool. Maybe at some point it would be, um, it would be worth it to see if we could make, like, a muddier looking, like, more shifty looking kind of sand monster. Because at the moment, uh, we took the stonelings and we matched their stone colors up to- You know what? For- just in case, let's get everybody- let's get everybody caught up really fast. We're not gonna spend too much time here. Um, but we did take some time to make versions of our stonelings and things that matched the rock colors in the desert. I wouldn't call these, like, sand golems since they're definitely more rock than sand. Um, hey, wait a minute, you're supposed to be pink. There you are. But like, uh, here you would see that we have- there's a tan version of this guy too that more matches like the sand and clay colors. And I asked Yang if every once in a blue moon, in celebration of the mysterious pink rock, you got a pink stoneling. So watch out for that. I'm excited about the pink stoneling. Mmm, cactants. <laughs> oh. Yeah, feels bad, man. Let's avoid that. Absolutely. Let's, let's, let's focus on cute monsters. Alright, and, um, so again, with our, with our stonelings currently, we've been making sure that their colors match the, 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 almost an atmosphere, and that'd be super weird. 
but maybe one day it'd be really cool to have cloud monster when we know what our clouds look like. But anyway, we've been trying to match them to the rock colors that you can see in their environment. And with the golems, we switched out their little their little tree for a little cactus, and the different colored guys here also have different colored uh, flowers on their cacti that more complement their hue. Uh, and yes, every once in a while, you might see a pink big stone golem. Again, in celebration of our mysterious pink rock that appears every now and then. And um, we also modeled in like little hints of sedimentary striations, sort of like what you would see in canyon walls. Uh, I tried a version that had kind of like more aggressive color shifts throughout it. Um, in my mind, I thought it would be really, really cool to do a version of, since like our stonelings are little rocks and these guys are super big rocks, how cool would it be if those different layers were like all the different colors of the rocks and like with the pink rocks on top and so on and so on. It looked like a rainbow mess, so maybe that, maybe, maybe we'll save that for something later or maybe I just need to work on it a bit more. Um, I don't know if we shared the hyena last time, but the hyena is now finished. And here he is, he's so cute. He's got the big smiling. Okay, the wolf mouth really does scare me. Like, just the way that works, it kind of gives me the heebie-jeebies. But yeah, the, he, he's, he is a hyena, but his color palette has been somewhat inspired by painted dogs, so he's kind of a weird mashup monster, I guess. Yes, Relis, exactly. So um, for anybody who might uh, get the, the Pokemon reference, that is exactly what it reminded me of. Uh, Relis is saying um, in regards to the rainbow mess striation that was the tricolored stone golem, like Muck, uh, from Alola. <laughs> the Mighty Shush says, can we call a giant stone golem the aggro crag? <laughs> Maybe. Um... Cube Quail, the Varanus. Uh, I need to take that prefix off of his name because he no longer has the cool bony back. So here's our here's our Sandy Varanus. He's got like a cool pattern on his back and kind of a, a higher contrast pattern, like uh, like a desert snake, but with fewer colors. Uh, I did try a version that had more colors, kind of ran into the same problem that we did with our golem. Um, but this guy looks super cool when you hold him up next to the forest. Uh, the forest version of the Varanus. They complement each other really well. Um, and I think we've shared Zilla before. I don't think there's anything else in here that we haven't... Oh, hi, Moobot! Ooh. Ooh. These look like candy. But I imagine that they would be even worse for your teeth. Um, let's see. Sarandri shared, like, uh, Tibetan salt crystals. Uh, so in regards to having a giant skull golem with crystals growing off of it. That'd be really cool. So, yes. I feel like there is something else. But I can't remember it right now. So let's work on our cyclops. Alright, so... It's a bit of a cheat, because our Cyclops happens to pretty much be where he needs to be. Except, uh, we don't have a version that's wearing cool battlements. Like this dude who's missing part of his face. He must have partied way too hard. Um, so, what we're gonna do today is spruce him up. You can see I've got the beginnings of a shoulder pad. Um, but honestly, I'm not really sure if that's a direction that we want to go in with them, and I haven't really... I've been working on other things, and I haven't really been taking a look at that since, uh, Friday of last week, when Smile and Pete was born. He's not even a week old, he's just a baby. He's even got little blushy cheek spots. Look at that. A rosy complexion. Oh, I like that guy. Uh... So yeah, we haven't really been focusing on this guy, and I thought what we could do today is, aside from get everybody caught up with what's been happening on this front, uh, spend a little time with this. So let's take a let's take a little picture of him. Let's try to get the other ogre in the background in a way that doesn't mess with our, our eyeballs. Boy, this guy is like a beacon of tan. Come over here, just for a moment. Thank you. And everyone say cheese. Oh 
no, I'm sorry, uh, Arithian. Uh, Arithian says, too many bad memories of the Varanus. My poor hearthlings never stood a chance. Oh, well, I feel like everyone has that kind of encounter with a monster in the game. But that's still super sad. And thanks, yeah, and uh, thanks so much for joining. The Mighty Shear says, instead of armor, give him the ability to wield a tree in battle. That would be really cool. Um... <laughs> Oh no, that's so funny. Aproxpro says that should be the description of Smiling Pete. He's just a baby. You could he would like has the same proportions as a big ogre, but a squishy cute face. That's the weirdest baby ever. I'm getting way too excited. Alrighty. So I haven't really primed any cool ideas going into this, so we're just gonna throw some stuff out there and see what happens. Um and again, when we do stuff like this, we want to think about uh, where this guy where this guy roams and what he has at his disposal. I'm gonna take a sip of coffee though, so hang on. Tamor says, "You know, Smiling Pete looks like an evolved form of a Varanus or some kind of amphibian. He actually does remind me of like a frog, a really big frog. I don't know. I there's something about this that it may not just be a joke." Oh, yeah, my coffee has gone a little bit cold and sad. Uh, Turtle Squish says maybe give them bone apparel, so sort of like the sort of like the goblins. But what we need to remember is that these guys are a lot bigger than the goblins. So if we gave them bone apparel, what would that be like? Um, that's a really cool idea. Things like hi, I didn't know I had that program selected. Sometimes I hit my hotkeys and the monitor over here does something and it scares me. Okay, cool. So what we need, if we're gonna go for bone apparel, let's Google bones in the desert. Oh, oh man, all of these, all of these friends had a bad time at some point. Um, this is not, I'm, well, in, in a sense, these are bones. I feel like that would be a little thematically off. Let's try animal bones in the desert because I'm getting I'm getting the heebie-jeebies. Looking at all these people skulls. I mean, people's are animals too, but I'm hoping that the the Google will be on our side and and kind of know what I mean. Bone. Uh, hey, there's a cool idea. Weirds throws out bone skull belt necklace. Uh, that'd be kind of cool. Neat. So we totally have a concept of skulls for the fire pit. And that would be really spooky. Let's just make a note of that. Sounds really rad. Um, animal skull for shoulder armor says eight bit crab. That's kind of that's yeah that's that's pretty darn good. Um, wow, holy crud! That's really scary. Uh, I don't think that's how that works. Hmm, mm -mm, just taking a gander really quick. <gasps> it's a thorn lizard! These are so good, they bite their tails. And they look really cute. Hmm. Oh, hey Chibi Kuroneko! Uh, Chibi Kuroneko says that they were busy playing Stonehearth and missed the beginning of the stream. I, I think that's a reasonable reason to miss the beginning of the stream. Oh, Mammoth! Mammoth skulls. I wonder if something like that would be okay. Let's try it, Mammoth. Mmm, animal. Skulls are cool. Just put skulls on everything. Animal skull, shoulder pad. Yeah, because it's like I don't know if I if I see ogres as being like an incredibly sophisticated people that they would like work leather and things like that into uh 
into armor. Uh, so, but I could see like if they're part of a, of another army, they might be they might be clad in in wear. Or maybe not. Maybe they have like a very subtle kind of ogre culture, and we just haven't investigated it yet. So maybe that's something that we need to look at. In their spare time, they create intricate, tiny pieces of art, despite their comically huge hands. Can we make these skulls comically small on their? <laughs> that's fun. I like that. Um, Surrender says, which does bring up a question. Wait, did I miss the beginning of that? Oh, Surrender says, What if Smiling Pete actually made friends with the Hardlings because he got confused about his allies, and the Hardlings end up dressing him in Raya's colored loincloths and stuff because he's just so happy, and he's made all the friends? Uh, that's... I don't... So, along those lines, Surrender also says, which does bring up a question, what if the Heart Will the Hardlings ever be able to make friends with the mobs? I am not sure. Um, that's definitely a gameplay question and a question for the wider team, but like in my heart, I love any opportunity uh, that a video game gives me to make friends with the cool monsters or to interact with them in a way other than killing them. Um, like uh, in Rune Factory when you can like tame monsters as pets, uh, or really any situation like that. Um, or of course in Undertale when you can literally like just actually be cool with everybody. Um, Ogres, okay, uh, Black Elf is saying the ogres could have animal hides as clothes. That's a really good idea. Actually, yeah. We'll write that down, but that might also be a good thing to push forward to one day when we do our, our ice biome, guys because I imagine they would wear more furs than bones. Uh, the Mighty Shush says, I would say a Beast Tamer comes out with that as a solid ability. Yeah, to be able to like befriend critters and have them in your, have them in your, your, your town. Um, though, I mean, apart from that, I think it would be cool because it's like, um, like we do our weekly playtests. We've been doing them as a group. I'm trying to make sure really quick that I didn't miss anybody. <laughs> BC Trillsker says, does he look like a frog as a secret appreciation for Froggy? Froggy is epic and great. Um, but Smile and Pete, I think, looks like this mostly on accident because, again, I was just over here working on his working on his everything and I just, I kept looking up at this, this space in here and all I could see was just the big, the big happy grin. Um... But yeah, so kind of what I was saying a second ago, like, apart from actually being able to tame a monster, like, uh, one of the things I've been noticing when we do our weekly playtests is, like, with the goblin campaign, for example, they just kind of always show up and just always ask you for things, and there's never, there's never really a moment where it's like, hey, what if, um, what if eventually, like, they were just cool with you, and every now and then they would, like, wander through your town and you'd see them interacting with your heartlings. Um, that's, like not in an incredibly rewarding way, but it's just one of those things that might be fun to see. So like, I wonder if, if one day that would be, that would be a fun thing. Um, but again, that's not a question for me to answer on my own. It's just a concept that I'm very fond of. Cool. Uh, though then again, these guys, these guys are pretty tough and I don't know, I'm not sure I'm, I'm not sure what their views on Hardling Society would wind up being. Alrighty. Really? Beginnings of a skull. It's a unicorn skull. I'm, now, sp spikes at that angle just don't work with voxels, so I mean, we know that we know that that's gonna, whatever we come up with here is gonna, is gonna suffer just a little in translation, but I think so far we've been doing pretty well. I think the hardest thing that we've, uh, that we've come up with to model has been the Zilla skull for the goblin before they were, uh, before they were a, ch a chieftain. Alright, we don't want it sitting up like that. I really do like the idea of a skull belt, like having like 
one or two, maybe three, like, skulls on their belt. That's super freaky. Uh, the Mighty Shoe says, will there be a higher Oki og of ogres? Will there be different highlights on different ogres? Um, honestly, it really depends on what kind of a what kind of a community they turn out to be. For uh, for instance, like there's definitely a hierarchy of goblins that works by some insane rules that they've come up with, um, and with kobolds especially, like their their color schemes are designed with that in mind so that when you when you look at a way that they are colored it gives you not that they themselves are colored but the, like the dyes that they wear and like the the fanciness of their hats and they tend to like um they tend to incorporate like precious metals and objects because of uh because of their their belief that when they die all the things that they're covered in they take with them to their cool rat god or goddess i think um, so, like, they themselves are, like, tiny, living, rat, lizard altars to their deity. And it's all about, like, valor and, and bringing glory to, uh, to them. I'm pretty sure it's, it's a rat goddess, not a rat. I think they look like rats! Ah! No! Lizard! They're lizards! They're kobolds! They're, they're lizards! But anyway, um, on the subject of them being uh, adorned in ways that hint at uh, like what their communities are and what kinds of beings they are, like I don't know, maybe are ogres solitary? Do they tend to wander on their own? Um, do they form like actual groups of, of uh, like actual congregations of ogres? At which point you'd kind of think that maybe there would be some sort of hierarchy, but maybe they also just don't think that way. Uh, Aprox Pro says, will you be able to see traders walking into your town in the future? Oh, that'd be cool. Um, again, I cannot, like, super confirm that, but I can sound off that, uh, I think one of the things that would be really cool, though, I mean, you kind of can when you summon, when you summon a trader. Um, in general, I think one day we want to see more activity of things coming and going. Um, but it's super early to say exactly what shape that's going to take. But I do believe that ideas um, of that kind uh, really kind of enhance... That's like an enormous human skull. I'm sorry, that's really scary. Also, I don't think that they would wear ogre skulls either. Hey, Cat's Faith, welcome to the stream! Uh, Sniper Penguin says they should be a village with a single chief. Man, an ogre village would be pretty darn cool. Hmm, I wonder. Because, like, on one hand, I like the idea of them, like, gathering up and doing things like that. But on the other hand, it's like, I know that both kinds of our goblins kind of do that, where they set up camps and conceivably they have some kind of some kind of like maybe goblin home base somewhere where they they have a situation like that um like i definitely don't think it's enough to say that ogres are just big and dumb like that to me is not very interesting um of course you have to like work in some teeth somewhere so i'm pretty sure we'll get the best out of this skull if we like embed it into something and we point it down uh but because again when we have things sticking out at angles that's when we start introducing a whole lot of noise with our voxels uh and i, I do want to put things on its head but maybe instead of horns maybe like a painted a painted graphic or like a, a hand print well there won't be enough voxels for a hand print so if there is something it would have to be like that or maybe a crack a crack would actually be really good like again kind of going back to the idea of who they are as a people and their culture is like would they make art or if they did because i i think i think they 
anything possessed with thought is capable of making art. Um, but what form would it take? Would it be something that we recognize, or would it be like more, more, more abstract and more specific to their considerations, like a specific array of cracks or like arrangements of objects in the environment? Skull shoulder pad. Ogres could make caves, that is an idea. Like, they've got those big hands with the thick nails, maybe they, like, dig systems, and it's not, like, just one cave, it's, like, tons of neatly interlocking caves. Um, what would really be cool is if the caves were, like, dug in patterns that were specific to, like, each clan of ogres. Like, they just kind of, like, have this digging tradition that if you could, for whatever reason, see into the mountain, you would see like a design in the way they dig their tunnels that they all understand, but you'd be like, wow, this sure is a tunnel that goes on forever because you're a dumb not-ogre and you don't get it. Like that, I think, is a neat example of, of like ogre art and culture. Just to throw things out there, though. Wee. Well, we we don't want eyes inset, but you know. Um, so yeah, maybe maybe instead of a painting, what we'll do is we'll we'll try and model some kind of crack into that. Um, belt skulls. We are probably not going to want those the same value as the one on the shoulder. That way, they don't jump out too much. There we go. Feels better. Okay, well, maybe we'll see you when you get back at Prox Pro, and if not, thanks so much for joining us, and we'll see you next week, and as always, I'll catch, I'll catch everybody who comes up with anything that we've, we've made on the past streams. Uh, Catsface says, would they have tried paint colors to show what ones they came from? Maybe. Um, though, we've, we were also not considering that we've also got the, uh, the orcs. So, like, with the kobolds, they have precious metal inlays and dyes that show hierarchy and this thing with their- they're covering themselves in cool things so that they take it with them to their- their kobold Valhalla. And with goblins, who knows? They're crazy. Um... I feel like orcs kind of represent the least manic and insane in some ways of our red kiln uh, bad guys like they seem a little bit uh, they, they seem more civilized in many ways uh, sniper, oh hey sniper penguin just pointed out a good one some skulls should be bashed cracked and some not to indicate how it was hunted, assuming it came from a large animal. That would be a really cool way. So if we had variation... Uh, how about various? I'll just put hunting. Not in quotation marks, but in that to remind me why. Uh, Sir Andrew says, Orcs should have teeth, ogre bones, trees, and such. Kobolds the fancy gems, and goblins the tents and such. That'd be kind of cool. You know, I actually haven't really thought about what the goblin camp in the desert should look like. Um, you know, we're taking everything kind of one step at a time. Um, the first step, of course, just coming up with all this stuff and and trying to weave a, rip ta a rich tapestry out of all that. Um, Alright, I know he's got like this, this shouldery belt guy here. It's, I don't know. I've, I do find this a noisy detail in voxels because it goes it goes diagonally. Doesn't always... See, if we, if we put it that way, it just looks like he's wearing a very strange halter top. Um... We could suspend our disbelief and just have it mounted on his shoulder like an armband, but we know that that's not how those work. Uh, yeah, Dovahkiin, we are working on a desert repaint version of our ogre, who in this case is a cyclops with a cool ridge down their back. 
Um, the game does have orcs, but I think at the moment they're playing a pretty small role. Um, you will encounter them. They're just not incredibly fancy yet. Well, in most cases. I saw something the other day that looked like it was fancy. I mostly encounter goblins and stonelings in my games, but I spend most of my games making cool houses. Alright, give that a little bit there. I am looking forward to the possibility, anyway, of antlers. And I don't see the desert biome as being a place of antlers. But I'm really looking forward to experimenting with that as a detail for whenever we finally do start dealing with our, our glacier guys. Because antlers are awesome! Okay. Um, we talked about animal hide, but I'm still like... I don't know, when I thought about that I actually thought of like a whole animal hide like get up. With like the arms dangling down and stuff like this. But this really something- <laughs> it just looks like weird hair. Let's do better than that. The other thing is we definitely don't have a furry beast in the desert um, of that size. I mean, maybe they could wear most of a hyena, but there's something about that that's just kind of inherently distressing. Like, we're, let's just mock that up really quick. Oh man, these colors are gonna be bad. But we're trying to go fast. Give him a little nose. Eyes in two different directions. Get the little teeth. Little little neck ridge. Ears are pink. These pink ears are great. It's got like the like paws hanging over, which would totally get in the way of his shoulders. So who knows how that would work. <laughs> maybe this is maybe this is more of a more of a northern detail. I feel like something like that could be pretty overwhelmingly hot in the desert, but I do love the idea. Mm, the Mighty Shush is asking, why did Tom stop doing the streams? Um, Tom is working on a lot of other things, but he's still around and he's still supporting us and still being awesome. But we've taken up the mantle of doing the streams in the meantime. Um, not completely, not completely without without guidance and input though. Like Tom is still very much with us. Hmm. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it looks like a teddy bear. I agree. Well, this is a this is a very quick and dirty paint up of a of a hyena. So you know, let's let's just let's switch that off and and save that for another day. Um. Hmm. This might be enough to go on for now. Oh right, we were talking about the, uh, this problem. Look, you know, this guy has like a cuff around his arm, but our Cyclops has these big thick pads, and I feel like if we added a cuff to that, it would just get really busy. So let's, let's not worry about that. That's just not gonna bother me too much. Hmm. As long as this is going at a 45 degree angle, it shouldn't be too bad. I don't know. Something about it. Something about it. Uh, Cat's Faith says that they could have a fox or rabbit pelt, uh, like in their in uh, in their in their belt or something. <laughs> I don't know. Stuff like this that I'm, I'm painting right now also gets back, like, when I look at, like, their their fancy skirt, I could see that as being, like, a very rude but effective just use of, like, scraps. Uh, but when I see stuff like belts and buckles and things like that, I feel like this implies, this implies something far grander. Like leather working and smithing of tiny details. Uh, or Orithian says if they were to wear armor, a Varanus hide toga-like chest piece might look cool. That could be kind of cool. 
Um, they've already got the the ridge the ridge down the back pretty well covered. Though I think it, I, no one has worn a Varanus skull yet, and you could argue that Varanus don't really have skulls; they just have a front end. Um, also, I feel like that would kind of wind up looking like you've just got a beak. Now you're like a really angry version of Smiling Pete. Cat's Faith, actually, that's a really cool idea. Armor could be a door that they found at a farm that became a shield. Found object door! Um, you know what, let's, let's start here. Let's see what happens. Uh, a skull breastplate. Mm, it might get a little, it might get a little too dense up in here. Also, again, it just looks like he's wearing a really tight t-shirt when we put stuff up there. So, let's hold what we got for now. And we're gonna try and model this this skull detail on the shoulder. Um, and to Geister's point, Geister's point, a Varanus helm would be great for a Cyclops. Two teeth on either side of the eye. Actually, you're right. But then again, then again, the Varanus has that big beak, like right down in the middle. I don't know, I see it as a beak. It's a turtle. Turtles have beaks. They're like weird land crawly lizard birds. Hmm. Okay, let's get this together in a way that we can actually see what we're working on. I'm hitting the wrong hotkeys again. So I go from program to program. Wait, no, this one's not the paint over, this one's the paint over. Let's minimize that. Minimize. Sure, Photoshop. You you do you. Ugh. Alright. Wanna see our other guy in the background here? The way we can have a reference as to how that thing goes. <laughs> All right, I think we're good. Oh yeah, uh, Cat's Faith. This is um, this is Smiling Pete. He's a an, an interesting outcome of staring at the Cyclops' face too long. All right, let's get in there. Yeah, so as you can see, so we've been looking at his front a lot, but he's got quite a lot of cool detail on his back. Like, he's rocking the whole ridge. Looks cool when you zoom out. It actually took a while to, to, mo to model this because for a long time it just looked like a big mess on his back and it wasn't very cool. There's a coconut dude? I did not see that. Okay. Let's go right in for the skull, because skulls can be really difficult. Uh, but first, since I do like the shape of that shoulder pad and I don't want to get rid of it, I'm going to copy this guy out. That way, worst case scenario, we can go back. Okay, so we don't have a ton of voxels to work with. And also, though I wanted this skull to point down, we're not going to have a lot of room for it to do that. You see his hand is right here. So let's see what we can do. I mean, maybe the skull will just point out after all. Let's start just with the, the silhouette of the side. So what I want to do is pull this out a bit. Uh, from the right. Center that up and give it, give it some length. Yeah, you know, after all, we might have to have this going out sideways anyway. We shall surely see. Uh, let's color it something a little more bone-like, except I have gotten rid of- there we are. Those are all the same color. Something neutral but distinct. That looks weirdly green. Uh-huh. No, that's empty. It's 
Let's warm it up a little. Good enough for now. Just like the beginnings of a, of a nose situation. Start of a socket. We're also starting to see opportunities for teeth. This is a very wide skull. So we're definitely going to want to pinch in those sides a bit. Hey Block Cabin, welcome to the stream! Uh, and yeah, uh, Black Elf, that's exactly the point. These guys are 100% scaly. They are a hairless variety of ogre. Whereas in the temperate biome, the ogres are a combination of scaly and hairy. But I feel like that even their scales, like they, they have like less scales and more just like hide, really thick hide. And yeah, actually, uh, what what Geister is saying that the Northern Alliance will see furry ogres, that's kind of what I'd like actually, is to see if we can take them in in sort of a, a big furry uh, big furry yeti direction. I think that would be really fun. Um, and it would it would kind of like finish out finish out what we're starting here. So let's see a minute. I wonder if we could shortcut this a little bit. I don't want to copy it exactly, but let's um, let's grab that Zilla skull. Oh, lost in my folder again. Okay, that's definitely not where we need to be. Hmm. Hey guys. Oops. Don't do that. All right, um, you will be fine. Let's grab you. Okay, that skull is gigantic. We're not gonna be able to use it, but we'll still have it as a reference for a pretty decent cubicle skull. Oh, we could have taken the dude with the chipmunk skull on his head. That would have been good. I forgot. That's okay, we'll deal with that. Uh, yeah, Cat's Faith, we've actually got a whole ton of different desert goblins. Wow, it really does make me laugh when you see the models next to each other. Like, these are these are made at a certain size to uh, kind of, like, get a lot out of fewer voxels, that way they don't get too busy. Uh, but that means sometimes you'll run into situations where it's like, this is the smallest ogre ever. Okay, we are dealing with a much smaller bit of real estate here, but that's okay. We can make it work. Hmm. I have faith. May take a bit. But we will find a way to make it a rad skull. So what I was thinking about here was if we uh, we might be able to create some more dimension to it if we take in the teeth and make them more under. But that also starts to open up weird gaps, so maybe that's a bit overboard. I do wish we could point it down. So one thing that I wasn't thinking about... Um, Actually, you know what? We can we can do this too at the same time. Oh yeah, but then it's like okay. So to finish the thought before I start a new one, one of the things I hadn't thought about was uh, if we move the bulk of the cranium up higher so that the skull could point down. But having the bulk of the cranium like kind of where you would expect the shoulder mass to be makes more visual sense. But it might be a cool silhouette if it's the other way. I don't know. Uh, we could experiment with it. By, by taking this and 
getting rid of it. Moving that over here. Whoa! Shoulder pads for days! That looks kind of fun. And overboard. Or maybe, dare I say it, ogre board. I'm playing with fire. Alright, so what's happening to the skull right now is I'm just pushing on the silhouette a little at a time, and these are the kinds of things that cause smiling peats to happen, because you start seeing really hilarious faces when you do this. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Uh, let's get rid of that. That looks really terrifying. Okay. Um, I don't know. I kind of liked the look of the the two the two shoulder pads there. That was super gnarly. Uh, but we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna see where we can take this other than in a really goofy direction. Because at the moment this doesn't really look like anything good. Um, I don't know. There's like oh there's there's like an awkward adolescence with any kind of uh, voxel modeling. Like, you go through a very long and uh, crazy period where things just don't look anything like you wish they would. And eventually, through possibly witchcraft, uh, they, align, they align themselves around what you are trying to get them to do, and you have a model that actually looks like something. <laughs> now, the pain overs help a ton, actually, and so one of the things I'm struggling right now is that we don't really have an incredibly effective paint over what we're trying to do here. That doesn't mean it's a lost cause. All right, so if we push it down one more, like to say we had teeth it's gonna like sit on his hands. So this is as far down as we can go effectively. Mm. You know, maybe part of the problem too is I'm not looking at this the way I need to. Mr. Ogre Dude, I need you to do something. Not that way, not that way. Wait, no, I had it. There we go. Yes, we have changed our vantage point. Oh, thank you, Black Cabin. Um, Cat's face says, for weapons, could have a longer and shorter branch or a log wrapped together. That'd be really cool. That's, that's definitely something that we haven't really delved into just yet, is like, specific weapons and stuff like that. Um, eventually I do wanna, I do wanna get to a point where we are addressing all these things. Because in the long run, I think it just makes these different environments and these different aesthetics all the more immersive. Um, at the moment, we're not really, like, I get to work on these guys with you on the stream, but when the stream is over, there are other things that I'm working on that are relative to A20. Um, but there will definitely come more opportunities down the line for like focusing on these explorations again. Hmm, you know? Ooh, that is cool. Black Elvis suggesting a skeletal spine on their backs would be really cool. I don't know, their backs are already really, really busy, but that's a cool thing to just keep in mind for, uh, because again, we still have orcs and kobolds at some point. Alright, I'm not sure if the pointed down skull thing is working out. Um, 
Like, we've got a lot of room for mass out here, but we can't... We can't point it down any further, and, like, I want to extend the skull this way, and we can only extend it in the other way without running it into their big old paws. Let's not give up hope just yet, but I think we're gonna go back to the horizontal skull here in a minute. Let's not worry about both sides at once. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's not meant to be. Whoop. There you go, dude. Yeah, I don't think that's getting the point across. <laughs> you did hear aesthetics. Mm, okay, I nearly hit a Photoshop hotkey. Alright, I know that this is not done, but... Oh. There. I knew it was one of those. But, dang it, it just looks cool. Alright, so what can we do? <laughs> Surrenderies, yeah, that's exactly what we're doing. Skulls as pauldrons. Pauldrons. And yeah, it did, like, before it did look like a really weird... A really weird alien skull, and and not in not in the good way. Oh, I've got something highlighted. That's why I can't. Kind of neat. Actually, this isn't a bad... So something that I want to do eventually is go take a look at our kobolds and see if we can clean up their face a little bit. I kid you not, for the longest I really did think they were like cool rat dudes. Um, but they are supposed to be like more lizardy. Um, but that's kind of cool. Hey Awesome Bricks, thanks for joining us! Always more fun with more people. Um. <laughs> Alright, so Awesome Bricks and Block Cabin are our brothers. Oh, cool! Wow, thanks for joining the stream, guys. Wish my brothers and sisters would come to the stream. Though I don't think the world could handle that. Alrighty. So we're starting to find some coolness in these shapes, at least on this side. We've only got just a handful of blocks to work with, so we wanna we wanna be conscious of how we're using them. So that in the end, we're given enough information so that when you look at it, you can be like, wow, that guy's got skulls on his shoulder pads. Yeah, that's actually that's actually pretty clean. And I'm again, I'm not gonna lie, I kinda like the double the double pauldron look, and it would open up more opportunities for how they stay on other than putting a a steppy diagonal across them. Cause like pauldrons can also be like let's not get into that actually. Ugh, it's a nightmare. Alright, so we're gonna flip this so that it's nice and symmetrical. But first we want to make sure we're not accidentally selecting more than we intend. Alright. You know, the half skull look is all the rage. There we go. Whoops, whoops, whoops. Always, always, always make sure that you're facing just one side of this thing up here or you will grab every block you never meant to. Cubicle is funny like that. Oh, hey. 
Oh, interesting. Wow, okay. So as it turns out, these really aren't as wide as I thought they were. Well, maybe that looks okay. Let's have a look. It's not bad. Let's move these, let's move these little fangles. Little teeth. Maybe get a little more width. Oh, it messes with the profile. All right, wider teeth, or was the other one okay, you think? You know, since they're now, like, parallel with this piece here, they kind of don't... This, like, looks like a weird indent. They don't look like fangs anymore. So let's, let's put them back. <laughs> that's fine, that's fine. You you can uh, you can absolutely sound off on the coolness factor of it and and uh, the feedback the feedback is always appreciated. That's why we do it like this. It is a little busy with like this extra bit in the middle. So let's see if uh, I don't want to create too many too many places where the voxels start and stop. Like the things that we want to pop out are like the eye socket and the teeth, which the teeth are probably too bright right now. Yeah, I like it better with this broad piece over the nose because when it's not, it looks really, it looks like it really calls a lot of attention to itself with that tiny like one voxel wide piece. This one doesn't have any fangs. Ah, oh, this one, this one is a failure. Hang on a minute. We can fix this quickly. By taking this and bring it over here. All right, that should do it. Neat. Oh man, turtle squish, that, that really is painful. <laughs> yeah okay cool all right i i think that's pretty i think that's pretty good for the for the pauldrons i actually think it looks cooler than the paint over by by a long shot though that that tends to happen the paint over is is a quick sketch and it can be very very hard to get the uh to get the proportions right and we would be there for like a hundred days if we were actually trying to make them look like voxel perfect Sometimes you can cheat a little bit. Um, right, yeah, I like that. Yeah. Okay, so for the belt skulls, I'm definitely gonna grab our goblins one more time. Oh, there's two of you. Sneaky beaky. Hold on a minute. Now that we have a, uh, a Poyo in the, uh, in the in the voxel editor that can only that can only mean one thing it's got to go on someone's head so smile and pete gets to wear the poyo for now looks very cozy they make a good team i want a bird birds are amazing let's grab our goblins oh hey prox pro Oh, bye Awesome Bricks, thanks for coming. Alright, I've just made a big mess of everything, so hang on a minute. I did this for a reason. One of these guys has an itty bitty squirrel skull on his head. We're gonna use that as a reference. And it's this little friend. Surrender, says, I imagine Pete having a Poyo or Fox friend as a pet. I don't know. He just, he looks so, he looks so cheery. I feel like he'd have, he'd, he'd, he'd be a, a dude who makes friends, friends easily, whether you want him to or not. All right, so here's our little squirrel skull. I think it's going to still be too many voxels. As you can see, um, that whole skull is like the size of our pauldrons over here. 
Okay, so maybe that's not going to be as helpful as I was hoping. But, that's okay. Generally speaking, there's always a way to make this work. Again, what we want to do is give enough information so that when people see this in-game, they know it's a skull. At the scale of this, I think it's safe to say that we don't have to worry about rounding it too much. Hmm, you know? I don't know. I don't know if this is going to work. Because if we did that... Hmm... <laughs> That's a little goofy looking, but it's worth a try. I'm not sure that reads. Worst case scenario, I think the pauldrons are pretty darn awesome, so... Maybe we, maybe we don't need a skull on the belt. I just really love the idea of it having a belt of skulls. Yeah, not quite. Not quite. No, that's just like a weird bug. Hmm, <laughs> how to fix this? I mean, it's not awful, but we'd have to like definitely like keep keep going with it. And at a certain point, the skull is going to get kind of intrusively big. Like that starts to look more like a skull. Yeah, I don't know if it's working yet. It kind of looks like it's like weirdly stuck to his body. Hmm, well what else would he put on his belt? We were talking about pelts. Hmm. Maybe just bones? That's an idea. Oh, see a turtle squish? Thanks so much for coming. It was good to have you back. I mean, it is possible that we would just like have pieces sticking out that were kind of like their like bony outcrops, just bits and bobs that he's stuck in his belt. It's not incredibly conspicuous, but it is cool. It's almost starting to look like he's got, like, a bandolier of weird bones. That's kind of neat. Definitely needs to be darker, though, because it's gonna... It's gonna fall into, uh, it's gonna fall into the rest of his, his coloring. Oh! Hey, Awesome Bricks, thanks for peeking back! That's not bad. It's a, it's a small touch, but it's kind of a cool one. And again, if our goal is to like provide the information to kind of like inspire what it is. <laughs> Thanks so much. That's that that means a lot. Um All right. Wow, honestly, I'm feeling pretty okay about that. Cool suggestion. That worked great. Hmm. And again, his hands are pretty busy. We could do wrappings around his hands, but I really don't think it's going to be necessary. We'll see how it looks. You know, something to protect your knuckles when you're punching doors down. Safety first. Think of the ogres. Yeah, it kind of just looks like a weird stripe. Dunno. I 
Thanks, Gamers United. Well, maybe. Maybe it just needs to be a little bigger. It's looking a little thin. So it has a little more impact on the design. Though now it it makes you wonder how he got it under his his uh his plates here, and that's a little ooky. Maybe maybe he wraps them over his plates, and then the plates on top stick out over it. It is cool, like, I like having a big dark patch right there. Actually, uh, to what Ty... Ty Ackerman is saying, doesn't anyone else think the Skull's Teeth are too prominent? They are, they're definitely way too bright for one. Um... Like, I wouldn't consider these colors finalized by a long shot. That's going to be really yellow in-game. If we do like this, I think it's going to bring in a bit too much noise. It does look kind of cool. Oop, nope, we're back to being very bright. But if we go thin with it too, it's going to lose kind of that chunky, chubby block toy appeal that we also want to incorporate. They should definitely not be as bright as they were, though. I can agree with that, 100%. That's still gonna be the wrong color. Ah. A little warmer, a little more desaturated. That's a little less offensive. Maybe just a narrow strap over the plates, or make them a space longer. Oh, oh! Uh, only show the front teeth, not the ones in the back. You can also color them in as an alternative. I don't know, it changes the shape in, in a pretty dramatic way. No, I don't know if that's working just yet. Um, let's, let's see if we can resolve the thing with the... Oh! Oh, it would be very thin. Let's give it a try anyway. So, small brainwave. Wait, I lost it. It'll be easier to see from here. Let's not accidentally take that out. So we're gonna just paint bucket this. Oh, that's very thin. get caught up really quick. Sorry, I went quiet there for a second. I was looking at the narrow strap over the plates. Okay, so we narrowed that down. I th think it's... I think it was a little more successful when it was a bigger piece. Like, I feel like now we've just kind of got a stripe going through his hand, but we haven't really doctored that yet. Um... <laughs> I would definitely walk away if... I would definitely run away if he was walking into my town. A lot of menace to this guy. Uh, can have one on his belt be a space higher, another next to a space lower. Maybe. Um, I 
Oh, you changed the color of the top of his shoulder behind the skull. Oh no, you're right! I've made a terrible mistake. Forgive me. There we go. I don't know, I kind of like that idea. Uh, I'm not sure if this is what you meant, but a little touch like that does add a lot of variety. Hmm. I mean, we might just wind up leaving his hands alone, but I did like the idea of having some kind of, like, cool dark band. Might have to adjust the shape a little bit so that you get the feeling that it's wrapped over the plate. It's also possible that that's too dark. Nope, that's even darker. Wow! There we go. It's a little better. Catsface says, got my friend this game. Now we find we have different approaches to some things. We were actually talking about that yesterday. So, um, like I've been saying, we have, uh, we have our group play tests, uh, and one of the things that we've been finding is that we all play the game in very different ways. Like, the way we prioritize, like, crafting orders, or the way we like to, uh, dig for storage areas, or build boxes instead, or, uh, what we prioritize, whether it's the safety of the town by building a wall, or by, like, creating epic, epic amounts of, like, food. Um, but it's like, we all have, like, a starting point that makes particular sense to how, how we do it. Oh. Serenity says lar large dark band looks good. Looks like he has hand wrappings. Yeah. I like the idea. Like I'd like I'd like a little just a tiny bit of asymmetry on him because you know he's got like tons of asymmetry. It's a small touch. Huh. Oh, well, that would be too busy since he's got the spiky things in his in his belt. Let's bulk that out a little bit so it's a little less noisy. And just add a tiny bit of stuff to give it a little more dimension. Hmm. You can do the same for the higher bone that's sticking up here. Yeah, feeling, feeling pretty good about that, actually. I feel like we should address the breastplate, but I'm almost afraid to say it. Because we don't want to make him look like he's wearing a tight t-shirt, but we also don't want to make him look like... I mean, okay, he's a fantasy monster. Fantasy monsters often have bits of armor that somehow magically stick to them. But that can also, like, be a really annoying thing. It's just because of the shape of this guy's body, if we just make him, like, a simple thing that holds these on, it's gonna look like he's wearing a really tight t-shirt. We don't want him to look like- oh wait, he's got his, his cool, uh, his cool spikes on the back too, and we don't wanna- we don't wanna muck that up. Oh man. I think we'd have to we'd have to have them like go between the spikes because I don't wanna I don't wanna cover those up. Straps under the arms could do it too. Yeah, it just looks like he's being squeezed. It's not very it's not very appealing. <laughs> it didn't invent du duct tape back then, I don't think. Right? Duct tape is, is, is as old as our, our oldest civilizations. We found evidence of duct tape stretching back even before the written word. You know what, I'm feeling like that should not be darker, but it should be lighter so that it recedes. That's an idea, so like making it look more more like it's like a full encapsulating piece. Um I'm okay with that. Oh Okay.
I'm gonna go ahead and give this just a little bit of a highlight on the cranium. But other than that, I think we're kind of coming down the home stretch with this. Looks pretty darn cool. That's too light. Just need a tiny, tiny bit. A little darker. There we go. Just adds a little, little bit of dimension to it. I think this is pretty okay. Kremen. Now put some skulls on the armor and he's wearing a skull bra. Truly the height of fashion. Oh, hey, 8-Bit Crab is suggesting to add some variation between the two skulls. What if you gave one of them horns? That would be cool. I am always a fan of horns. Let's copy this over, because in all honesty, we could make a few a few minor adjustments to that dude, and I'd consider him pretty, pretty epically done. Um... Let's compare him to the the friend that isn't wearing anything. Scandalous, I know. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I'm okay with that. I think if I were to experiment with anything on this in its current form, it would be to mess with the color of the brown here and go for something a little bit more along the lines of like a desaturated blue-gray. But then again, maybe not. I don't know. Let's see, Block Cabin is ask, asking, uh, what time does the game take place in? Um, that's a really good question because it's a super fantasy world. Um, but it definitely would predate, like, anything automated, anything electric. You want to think of it in terms of, like, like, fantasy world, like, the cool idea of Renaissance medieval, um, not, like, the gross covered in covered in mud, plague, and sadness. Um, yeah, I don't have a- I don't have a century that I could call out that would encapsulate it because I feel like so much of this stuff is like... so fancy. Yeah, Lod Piggy is- is pretty- probably pretty close there. Medieval is a good- is a good one to throw out there. Um, but, like, maybe more advanced in some fantastical ways. Like, these are guys that go out into the wilderness and settle them with their bare hands, and they also fight goblins. Uh, clerics and knights and stuff. They do have turrets, but they are made out of, like, wood and bits and bobs, and they fire turnips. Uh, except for that one that fires not turnips. It's significantly more deadly. Right, horns! That looks like a weird dinosaur skull. Oh, we're gonna run into that thing with these guys being really, really small again, so. No, nope, that's just gonna be noisy. We may not have enough voxels to make good horns that aren't super thin. We could always do like the little nub horns, but that might just read as noise and not like something that we did intentionally. Uh, we could do something like this and just give it like a slightly lighter color or something more now. Not akin to the teeth because that would be way too bright. Hmm. The other thing is this is an even number and it can be difficult to do horns with even numbers. Nope, nope, not there. Okay. Easy there, cubicle. Yeah, it's too many tall. Not sure if that's that's doing what we want. 
Itty bitty spikes. Nah, just looks like noise at a distance. <laughs> Puppy! <laughs> yeah, different shading is one way to do it. I don't know, it's like, I want to, like, be able to do, like, super cool horns. Horns take a while to model. You all, like, we talked a little bit earlier about, um, kind of the odd, ugly adolescent phase of voxels. Whenever you get into curving forms, boy, it comes out full force. Like, that looks super noisy and weird. So yeah, I think we would have to go with some pretty stylized stuff here. Horns out the side like ram horns is not a bad idea, um, but we don't have a lot of room to do it, is the thing. Because what's going to happen is we're going to start obscuring the, um, we're going to start obscuring the eye socket. Or we're going to get back, uh, push it backwards too far towards the head and it's going to touch the head and that looks kind of odd. And we've only got like two voxels, or even just one voxel back here where we could mount that on in a, in a way that works very well. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure if it's meant to be this time. I really like the idea, though. Boop! That doesn't do anything. That just looks confusing with his teeth. weird dinosaur skull situation. It does look super weird with his teeth. Worth a try, though. Uh, Arcane Gunner is suggesting a maybe, maybe a variation with the skull on the Cyclops' head, or other hats. Uh, maybe. Though that's starting to wander into, uh, into goblin territory. Um... We wrote something down here along those lines. It's like having different feet. Okay, yeah, so earlier in the stream, it came up that it would be really cool to have various forms of their of their skull uh, ornaments that showed how those animals might have been hunted or told a story about that. And I think that's definitely a really cool idea. So uh, maybe that's something we could experiment with. We actually have not tried to put a crack in either of these. But there's so little space. Oh my gosh, these are small models. Eeny beedy. Like it doesn't really look like a crack. It just looks like I missed a spot. I mean, it kind of looks like a crack. If we were more subtle about the coloring, maybe, maybe it would be more successful. But it also just kind of looks like a line. Darn you, tiny models. And yet, it is really, really fun to see what's possible within, uh, within the constraint. See, that kind of looks like a crack. It's not so bad. Yeah, we were gonna try a cracked skull variant. Uh, but I feel like that's a very simple, a simple solution. I'm hesitant to carve pieces out of it because I don't want to introduce more angles to catch light and shadow. Um, like, because it would be the same, the same depth as everything else. But maybe it'll work. I don't know. Sometimes it's hard to, hard to tell until you actually see it. Oh, actually, that looks kind of rad. I kind of dig that. What do you guys think? I'm gonna adjust the... Yeah, I was wrong. I'm glad we tried it. Oh no! I've, I've ruined it! I've lost his eye. Thank goodness, order's been restored. One of them will, like, have an arrow sticking out. <laughs> Awkward arrow that somehow came f just from the sky. <laughs> that looks like a fork. One of them has a fork sticking out. 
Yeah, the indented crack does look pretty good. I agree. Um, Tyacrimen is recommending that we break a tooth. Oh, what if we got rid of one of his? Ah! Yes! I love it. No! No slice mode! Teeth are so little! Ah! We broke that one. I don't know why I think putting my face closer to the screen will help me see it better. It doesn't. Well, maybe not right behind the fang, but the next one back would be more evident. Yes. That's pretty fun. It's a little busy, though. That that It's a little busy, but it also looks kind of fun. I do like that he- I like the one fang version, like... Somehow, this is incredibly appealing to me, and I don't know why. Yeah. Alright, I like that a lot. Okay, the indented crack, absolutely. The missing tooth is pretty cool. That might be too- Might be too- Oh, hello. Hi, cubicle. You, you feeling alright? Oh, it's Smiling Pete. He's here to tell us everything's okay. And that he's got a poyo on his head. You think he knows? Uh, it's a little less busy, but it's also kind of less fun. But we'll keep it for now. I don't think there's any harm in that. I do like that the, the skulls are a little bit, like, cooler unto one another now. So. Alright, guys, I think we made a lot of headway on this. This looks pretty good. Uh, unfortunately, it's starting to get a little late, so I think we're gonna have to leave off for now. Um, but, we'll, we'll join back up next week, Wednesday morning, or maybe Wednesday afternoon or evening for you, and we'll take a crack at another, another one of our remaining desert friends. Uh, so I hope you'll be looking forward to that. We've still got kobolds, we've still got orcs, um, and I'll be sure to catch anybody up who might have had to cut out early or might have missed these guys next week too, so we'll recap on what we did as always. And yeah, so thanks everybody for joining us today and for the awesome suggestions and feedback. I really like what we made. I think this is super fun. Um, as always, thank you guys so much and yeah, see you next week.